Hey, I'm David Howley. I am the singer and the guitar player and the bass player for We Banjo 3. And today I'm going to be running through what I do on the guitar to make uh, the bass sound. Um, I play a Collings C10 that uh, built in Austin, Texas, and I have a couple of different uh, modifications to the guitar itself. The main one being is that my uh, fretboard stops a little bit early to allow room for uh, this uh, Fishman Rare Earth pickup, but they're usually positioned um, in this direction. And uh, our fiddle player, Fergal, on tour about 12 years ago, figured out that if you just flip it like this, it'll just pick up the, uh, the lowest string, the, the sixth or the, the lowest string on the guitar. Uh, and I play Dadgad tuning, D-A-D-G-A-D. -A -D -G -A -D. Um, so over the years, uh, it's just been a process of kind of splitting, uh, splitting my picking and my strumming uh, kind of into two parts. Uh, so I focus on the bass primarily uh, with every riff and then I use the guitar side as more color. So if I'm playing a G um, or I play maybe A, I always try and make sure that my uh, every chord I play is rooted on the bass string. My pedal board is built on a Temple Audio board. I have a Shure um, wireless pack that has a built-in tuner, and the tuner acts as my mute switch. And then that goes through a Super Octave OC3 made by Boss. Um, again, I've used a ton of different octave pedals in the past, and I found that the Boss has the least latency. Uh, so when you're playing live, it has the biggest punch uh, sound it, nine, 9 out of 10 sound engineers will recommend. Uh, and then I go from that into a Stadium Bass DI, uh, again made by LR Bags. Uh, this just has a small bit of active compression, and just smooths it out and makes it a nice full round tone. I have two outputs on my guitar, one for my clean guitar sound and then one for my bass. In the band generally what I'm playing is kind of a, a high five drone on the guitar side, so the on the, 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 the lower five strings, and then I add my bass as I would think a bass player would play it. So that. Uh, and then that works for a number of different tunings, and but generally, uh, Dadgad seems to be, for what I've found, the easiest way to get the sound. Hello, I am Fergal Scahill from We Band of Three. I'm here at Reverb.com. Delighted to be here, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Irish fiddle and some Irish fiddle ornaments. And in that little piece there, I used um, a roll, which is an Irish roll. It's a, it's slightly different from any rolls that would be in maybe the classical world or the bluegrass world, and it's actually quite simple when you play it fast. <laughs> It seems quite hard, but we break it down into three very simple pieces. So it starts with a long note into a triplet and another long note. And this all happens in one bow. So it happens all in one bow. So this is the first finger roll. And you have a choice then where you can use either your second finger to, to, to do the triplet. Or I like the third finger because you get more of a, a smack on it. You get more sort of a, more attack. It's actually a really simple roll. Works on all fingers. That's the Irish roll. It's as easy as that.
drawing comparison between bluegrass and, and Irish fiddling. So there's a lot of similarities, obviously, because they, I suppose the Irish fiddlers came over to America way back when, and that's where the, the, the modern day bluegrass has come from when the meeting of the minds happened and we, we wound up with what is bluegrass. And, but some of the ornaments didn't really translate. So the, the role that we spoke about is one. And then there's a bow triplet that we do in, in Irish music. It doesn't really happen in bluegrass as much. Uh, it's a very tight, short triplet. So it's almost a scratch on the bow. So it's a lot of pressure on your index finger where you're pressing down. And I do have a shorter bow hold, not any particular reason. It's just the way my style developed over the years because I know there will be people going, hey, you're holding your bow wrong. So I just, I, I choose to hold it this way, right? <laughs> so the bow, the bow hold. Triplet is, is very tight, very much in the fingers, in the hand. It's not quite three notes. So it's, it's, it's actually quite hard to slow down because as soon as you slow it down, you get into a tight sort of a more classical triplet, whereas it's it's like um, a crown or something. Hello, uh, I am Martin Howley from Wee Banjo 3 and I'm here with the mandolin today. Uh, I play, I grew up playing Irish music and I have an interest now in bluegrass and a lot of American folk music. But today I thought I'd talk about uh, a rhythm that's used in Irish music that's not as common in other genres and that's the jig, 6-8. Uh, so the meter is different and then as you use it on the instrument it's quite different. So uh, firstly the mandolin in Irish music Irish music is a dance music and, and uh, the mandolin serves as part of the rhythm section almost to nail down uh, that subdivision. So in, in that way, the alternate picking method that you use is a down, up, down stroke. So down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. So there's like a repeat down together and that creates the jig rhythm. So slowly that sounds something like. So if we were to look at uh, in a in a jig like um, Banish Misfortune, you're creating that steady driving pulsing rhythm that's so synonymous with Irish music by your method of picking. And of course, then Irish music, as many of you know. Uh, doesn't tend to follow a strict uniform rhythmic pattern. It tends to have pushes and pulls and swing that's naturally inherent within it. Um, and so maybe I could demonstrate some of that and the techniques that get you there. Uh, so when we're playing a tune like If I play that just very straight, we end up with a pretty militarized sound. To add some swing to it, I'm over-accenting the first note in a series of six and then under-accenting the next emphasis downbeat, say the four. Uh, so that sounds something like. And just there, I slid from the, in that, in that tune, there's an F sharp, so it's D major, but I'm sliding from the F natural to the F sharp on the four to create another bit of the rhythm running on. And then at the end of that phrase, there was a, a long note. And in Irish music, a lot of times on the fiddle, and if you look at Fergal's video, you'll note the role that he does in it. Um, the fiddle, the accordion, and the flute would have been primarily the instruments of Irish dance music. So to when the mandolin and the banjo came into the family, they learned a technique called the treble to fit in rhythmically with those long notes. So when there's a long note like that, we often use a treble to cover the long note. So.
So it's a series of three notes in a down up down fashion. Again, once you've got the down up down from the jig, you got the down up down for the treble. So that's that da da dum. And the last little technique there that I could quickly show is that there's a little pull off. So that's where I'm fretting an F sharp with my finger. I mean, guitarists and banjoists out there will all be familiar with this technique. It's used a lot in other music. Um, that I'm pulling with the uh, ring finger using the A. So I'm going. So as I pick, I'm pulling with this finger simultaneously. And that's creating that sound. Uh, so. All of that put together in a jig um, sounds something like this. So that's an Irish reel called Dinny O'Brien's, <clears throat> played on a non-Irish banjo. So this is a kind of a, it's something I designed myself with Tom Neckville of Neckville Banjos in Minnesota. And it's very different from your standard Irish tenor banjo. Um, and the reason is because the music that we play with We Banjo 3 is more influenced by Americana and bluegrass and old time music. And so your standard Irish banjo is very, very bright and Irish music is very rhythmical and very rhythm driven. And so the music that you would normally play on a, on a banjo in Irish music would be, um, I guess, very percussive and you know, really leading the, leading the melody and leading the rhythm. What I found is that the work that we were doing with We Banjo 3, that I was very much adapting my style to fit in with more songs, to sound a little bit more like a claw hammer, uh, kind of five string uh, banjo sound and that I couldn't do that as effectively on an Irish tenor. So I went to Tom Neckville and I said I need something that basically plays like an Irish tenor banjo but sounds more like something like uh, Rhiannon Giddens and Bella Fleck had a baby or their banjos had babies and so we came up with this. So it's I mean, the pot end of it is basically an Irish tenor banjo size, but then the neck <clears throat> is a five string banjo. It's tuned down a tone from where Irish banjo would normally be tuned. But then because the fret size gets so big, uh, I have it capoed, or as you Americans like to say, capoed, up to uh, fret two. And that's just so you can physically play it without having to grow my fingers uh, an extra inch. Um, the longer neck gives the resonance that you don't normally get with an Irish tenor banjo. And that allows for me to... to be more effective and more uh, lyrical, I guess, when we do uh, tune sets. Or do songs, rather, rather than the tunes. Uh, and I do a lot of kind of a, an adapted cross-picking. which is to emulate uh, what a claw hammer banjo would sound like. Uh, you would not get that really warm, nice tone from your standard Irish tenor banjo. Uh, so this one is pretty unique. It's got a radius neck, uh, which is kind of funny because I didn't know that uh, for the first year that I had it. And so I was using regular capos and then discovered that you need a radius capo. It's a very unusual build um, in that there's no metal. So very, very different from uh, your standard Irish or even your standard bluegrass banjo. Uh, and it looks like the inside of a MacBook Pro. Um, so it's got a ball bearing tone ring, which can be adjusted. I think Tom calls it the cyclotronic uh, tone ring, which sounds very, very fancy. Um, so basically the head is tightened by twisting this, which rotates on the ball bearing. So it means that when you're on the road and you go to 6,000 feet and the head gets as tight as a drum, 
you can release it in a matter of seconds. And then the same is true when you go back to down to the colossal humidity of Tennessee in the middle of July, he can tighten it up as needs be. It currently it has three pickups in it because I'm a banjo player and you know where we fall down in the technique we try and accommodate it with uh, too much technology. Uh, but I'm currently just using one, which is the uh, Fishman Rare Earth. It also does have a humbucker and a piezo, neither of which I'm using at the moment. It's a synthetic skin head, which again, kind of just gives more of that nice uh, round tone that you wouldn't normally get. And when I built it and designed it with Tom, the one thing I said I didn't want was any bling, because I got so tired of mother of toilet seat and gold-plated banjos. And then he texts me, he says, what about the inlay? And I said, uh, I don't mind black. And he goes, I have some turquoise. I was like, ooh, I like turquoise. So then we ended up with kind of a black banjo with some fancy turquoise inlay, which is Irish uh, salmon, just in case you wanted that level of detail. But it looks really, really pretty. So that's it, that's my Irish-American hybrid banjo neckful thingamajig. Mm -hmm.